Hey buddies, welcome to Mass Games. My name is Simon, so I'm going to show you how to set up, play and review the game Machikoro Big Lights Big City. So Machikoro is a fantastic game that I've been playing a lot since it first came out in 2012. I've played the Deluxe Edition, I've played the uh, Millionaire's Row, I've played the Harbour Expansion, and there is actually a Legacy Edition which I haven't actually played yet, which I'm very keen to. And this particular game was nominated for the Spiel des Jahres 2015 award for the best uh, game there is in the world by the most prestigious events and awards company there is, the Spiel des Jahres, which is um, pretty much ranked for the best game that's in the family category, the category that rates, you know, replayability, easy to teach, easy to play, isn't too long. Now the box does say 30 minutes, but I have to admit, even with two players, you're looking at at least 30 minutes. Um, it says 30 minutes, at least 45 minutes in my opinion. So now what I'm going to do is set out the game just in front of us for one person and you'll see how it works. Now I do have to use a dice tray for this one as well. I'll be rolling some dice and seeing how that goes. So I might bring that into shot in due course. So in this game, we're trying to get the most points. We're trying to construct our buildings. We're trying to construct the first person to be constructing all six of your buildings and then you'll win automatically. You'll start off with some starter buildings. You'll start off with a city hall immediately before buying establishments. If you have zero coins, get one coin from the bank. Just to let you know, this is uh, slightly different to other versions of Machikoro. You will not see things such as the mine, which I think is worth uh, when you roll a nine. Uh, a mine for nine. You have the wheat field, get one coin from the bank on anyone's turn. So again, we'll leave that in shot as well. And then here are the six buildings you're looking to construct. These are landmarks. So if you can construct the harbour by spending two coins, if the dice equals uh, 10 or more, you can add two more to your turn on your turn only. So that's what you're looking to build, the harbour. We also have the train station for four, and I tend to do these in um, cost order. The shopping mall, the uh, museum park, the moon tower, which is different to the base game, and the airport. Okay, so these are the various cards that uh, you must construct. You can construct them in any order you like. So, how do you set up the game? Well, you're going to need various decks of cards. You're going to have these establishments, and you're going to shuffle these up, and you're going to deal out five. You must have five unique buildings to try and, uh, yeah, think about buying them. So let's draw one, two, three, four, five. It's wise to do it based on die value. On this occasion, we have a uh, two, two, we have a two, and a one. So what we're going to do here, and there's a limited amount of space, is stick out um, a one up here. So this represents um, a sushi tower. Let me just zoom in a bit and we'll just see how that works. Okay, different tripod today. So in this case, a sushi bar. If you happen to roll a one, if you have a harbour, you get three coins, the person who rolled it. So red cards are basically your, uh, to take that card, you take it from somebody else. A bakery, we've already seen it, it goes directly on top of the other card. And we have a general store. If you have less than two constructive landmarks, which is a fewer than, get two coins from the bank on your turn only. So this is only up to values one to three to six, and we have a cafe as well. Get one coin from the player who rolled the dice. And in this instance over here, the ranch, get one coin from the bank on anyone's turn. So that has been the starting establishments. We've also then got um, these sort of special buildings here. So we're using two of these cards. So drawing two cards, we have the publisher and the tech startup. What that means is get one coin from each player for each cup and each like bread symbol they have on your turn only. So as you can see, there's a bread symbol here, bakery symbol, uh, food symbol, and the tech startup. At the end at the end of each of your turns, you may place one coin on this card. The total placed is your investment. When activated, get an amount equal to your investment from all players on your turn only. So the various things you can be doing, of course, here's our cards. The final thing to do is there are some few more cards, and what I'm gonna be doing is moving these over to one side, because until they're needed later on in the game, these aren't too essential. It's going to take you a long time, and it, typically you will may well in fact build these in the order that you see them in. Okay, so we're going to move these down and look into this row here. This is 7+, plus, so of course once you have two dice, which means once you have a train station, you may roll one or two dice. You could be doing one of these things, three, four, five. You may buy one of these buildings. We have the tuna boat, we have the apple orchard, the soda bottling plant, the mackerel boat, and the family restaurant. Backward boat, if you have a harbour, get three coins from the bank on anyone's turn. We have the uh, the family restaurant, get two coins to the player who rolled the dice. 
we have the apple orchard, get three coins to the bank on anyone's turn. The soda bottling plant, get one coin from the bank for every cup owned by all players on your turn only. And the tuna boat, on anyone's turn, the current player rolls two dice. If you have a harbour, you may get as many coins as the dice total. Now what I'm going to do is just move these across and then have those card stacks off to the side. Now please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already, hit that notification bell and also check out the comments and descriptions for anything else and by all means I'll reply very quickly. So this all goes away now and again you can roll see who starts, it shouldn't matter but remember whoever happens to firstly can get all those buildings constructed is going to be the winner of those landmarks. Okay so here's those deck of cards and as you saw from that box these were actually just kept in baggies because, quite frankly, uh, there's a lot of spare space in the box. I mean, yeah, you could go with those other expansions, but supposedly this is a brand new experience. And I'll get on to my review, of course, straight after I've done the explanation of the game. So there we have it. There's all those coins. You also need to take three coins. So basically what represents that is you're having a starting amount of money that you can work towards. So everyone's going to get three money each. And uh, again, I deliberately put them back in the bag, but I'll leave the rest out of shot. I don't think we're going to need them. And yeah, away I go. I'm now going to roll the die, and I'm rolling just one. So I've got the lavender, the black, and the blue. I'm just going to roll the lavender. Let's just do it here. I have a roll of five. Now, again, on my turn, all I have currently is a one and a two and a three that I'm rolling on, so 50% chance. So with a five, I've still got my three coins. So let me put that into shot. What I can choose to do is either buy something or choose not to do anything at all. So I've got five coins and I'm thinking of probably buying a card. So here's what I have available. They're all actually, funny enough, all low value numbers. So I'm going to go for, I'll go for a two, this ranch. So I pay one coin, it's going to go off to the bank, Let's stick it here for the time being, and take the ranch card, and in this instance, move this card along. Now it's the next player's turn. Let's just say it's their turn and they roll a two. Well, in this instance, uh, they have a green card activating. So in this case, you get one coin from the bank on your turn only. Now, the way these cards work to activate, you get the restaurant cards, the red cards activate first, so you can steal from someone. Then you activate what you have, and then everyone else can activate their stuff. And the major establishment, those purple ones, then activate. So they've done that. And then what we do is replenish, and we have another flower orchard, so we can move all these along. You don't necessarily have to. And then it's my turn, I roll a four. Doesn't help me, that person's gonna gain one coin from the bank. So now what happens, I've got zero cash. So I've got two cash, but let's say I had zero cash. I could actually spend um, zero coins, get one for the bank, as long as I'm building something. So I can maybe get the bakery, but I do have two cash. I'm gonna buy the flower orchard, let's say. So I'm gonna buy that, and as you can see, I'm running out of space down here. It's their turn, they roll a three, and they can build this. And then say it's my turn, I roll a one. I trigger my weak field, I've got another coin, imagine I hadn't spent any. And now I can consider maybe just flipping over one of these things, which means I can start um, considering other options. So if I get 10 or more, you may have two or more to your turn only. And some of these buildings might well be relevant for now. And it's their turn, they roll a three, so again, they're benefiting. Now, if they happen to have had the cafe, they could have stolen one of my coins. Then it's my turn, and again, I haven't got a four. So it's an engine building game. It's going to start slowly and then ramp up. And there's various things, various take that elements, which will kick into play. So what do I think of the game? Well, this was a lot of fun, lots of smiles, uh, lots of good memories coming back to this game. There are, in fact, uh, more. There's actually, uh, yeah, of course, six of these cars here. So that is one of them. Remember, you do start with a city hall. It's permanently constructed. And, you know, I like the backing. I like to make sure it obviously makes sense in terms of what is a starter card. I love the interaction on this game though. Nearly every turn, um, if something gets rolled, someone else is checking their stuff to see, do I need to pay someone? Do I gain something? So you always engage throughout the game and there's very little downtime. Um, you typically uh, can of course go for a certain strategy. You can go for what's known as a wheat strategy, just having all the wheat cards and just trying to get ones every time. I've seen people win doing that a lot. Uh, going for the cafes as well as stealing from people all the time so they don't have the money to buy those landmarks. Also, um, other games similar to this, I mean, the Sid Saxon's games can't stop from like the 60s and the 80s, whereby, you know, it has two dice typically. And of course, a distribution of seven means if you get a card around the value seven, then it's happening a lot. So you're not getting a big bonus, whereas the ones towards the other ends, uh, they might help you out a lot. There's a game that I played quite a few years ago that came out since this. 
that was regarded as the Machi Koro Killer, and that is called Space Base. I played that quite a lot before it actually kind of went big again, as per some other games. And um, as much as I like that game, it does use a lot of cards, and I, in a way, this game is coming back to me. I quite like this one a lot too. Uh, aside from that, thematically, it kind of makes no sense, apart from that tech startup card we saw here, whereby you're investing, so you're putting money down, and then getting a return later. Um, in terms of the components, I mean, these cards are pretty thick. Um, I'm actually pretty impressed with these cards. The coins are fine. There is a kind of kind of a weird welting going on on the ones in particular. But aside from that, it's um, they're pretty effective. Uh, they've got a kind of interesting, like, weird inner punch going on there. Um, but I like the strategy, the various things you can do. I think the games are pretty close. You're generally only one uh, landmark in it. Um, I think the fact there's a lot of fun and humour and smiles and laughter going on too. And um, ultimately, I think it's a great package. You know, I think it's a brilliant idea. It's worked very effectively. Uh, of course, there's lots of other expansions and stuff, which I think they're fine. I don't think I ever needed them, but I, was, I, was, I didn't mind playing them. But this is the kind of game I kind of give a 7 out of 10 to. Um, if there's anything else you want to ask about this, then um, please do ask. Uh, but I definitely find it very interesting. I like the fact that you have these coffee cups and... You know, you can go for various things. And um, there's nothing where you really can stop someone from taking from you other than you trying to spend your own money. So it's good and bad. It's uh, it's good that obviously you still have your turn to buy something once the, you know, everyone else has had a chance. So that's good too. Uh, I think the dice are quite nice and bright. Interesting choice of colour. I'm not sure why they've gone for these ones specifically. Um, but aside from that, no, I found it very interesting. It's quite nice building buildings as well. You know, saying, oh, you know, I want to build a, a pizza joint now. That's quite a lot of fun just to talk about as well. So again, I hope you found that of interest. Thanks very much. And again, check out the playlist that this will be in. This will be in the How to Set Up Play and Review, as well as the dice distancing. I'll be doing a distance how long these go, one for each one. And finally, please check out the, the family sets of games. But all the best. Thank you very much. And bye for now.